Unfortunately, this is it, guys. The final episode of What If Naruto Was Pure Evil with the Speed Force. I just want to thank you all for your help and your support, guys. All the likes, the comments, all the new subscribers because of this video. It's been truly amazing. So I just want to thank you all for that. But you already know there's nothing to be sad about because there's new what ifs coming up for you guys to enjoy. And if you want to see and enjoy more what ifs and if you haven't, Found out yet I indeed have three more channels that I post what if on every single day for you guys to enjoy. So go over there, all the links will be down in the description and check them out and enjoy guys. And don't forget to turn on the bell notification. So yeah, without further ado or wasting more time, let's begin the finale. Start the intro guys. So the last part that we left off, Jiraiya was unable to accept what Harrison was telling him about Naruto and what Naruto could possibly be. The idea that Minato and Kushina's son was a monster that has slaughtered many already was sounding rather ridiculous but the more and more that he heard about it the more his mind was telling him that what Harrison was saying was truthful. The evidence did not lie, and the evidence were there as clear as day. While that was going on, Naruto was within the forest with Orochimaru, having a little conversation with Asanin. To prove his loyalty, Naruto ran and got Anko. Anko was heavily confused as she just appeared in a different place all of a sudden. Naruto drive his hand through her heart like it was nothing ending her life. Orochimaru was fascinated in the speed, truly so, unable to understand how Naruto was able to move at such an intense speed as he wanted to know the secret to all of that. As they struck up a partnership so, they would work together for the utter destruction of the hidden leaf. Upon making his way to the tower, things started to act strange. As Harrison decided to make his move after, they found the body of Uncle Midorashi. It seems like she was stabbed however on closer inspection, her heart was burned and something had phased into her chest given how jostle her muscles were. It was him. So they brought Nuta in on their false pretenses. Upon bringing him to the location they proceeded to strip him of his chakra and electrocute him to make him weep before they seal him away. Upon waking up they started to question him. They started to question him rather intently but Naruto was so confused as he didn't understand what they were talking about. He didn't do anything wrong. As he couldn't understand why they were doing this to him, he begged and prayed for them to stop this but here is an authorized. Ibiki to use more torturous methods. As Naruto mind and soul was broken to see that the people that he thought was supposed to protect him were torturing him. That was until the speedster known as the Phantom arrived. Zipping and moving into place like a ghost, the name was catching on greatly. As the Phantom proceeded to grab Naruto, upon facing into the room, he told him that he was the one that was behind all of this. He wanted to see just how far he could push their buttons. After all, Harrison would never truly authorize these kind of torture sessions. However, the Phantom possessed a special ability. A certain frequency of his voice was able to tamper with someone's mind. And when they slept, he gave them the command over and over. 
making their mind more open and accessible to do things that they wouldn't ordinarily do. As they just had one question for him, why? Why would he do this? However, that was for him to know and for them to find out. With that, he was gone after ending Ruta's life. Every single member that participated in this was feeling rather shattered mentally and physically as well. Except for Donzo, of course. The only thing that he was upset about was because he was named to transfer the tail beast over before the boy died. However, other than that, Hiroson couldn't believe what he had done. Jiraiya had to take a moment away from Hiroson and everything. While he was still in the village, he did not come to the tower. He did not speak to any of them. In a week, he couldn't believe it. Ibiki, all of them. How couldn't they have not seen it? How could they have watched? How could they have been this easily manipulated? As the tuning exams took place, Hero's and Heart was just not in it as everything took place. When the invasion began, that was another problem entirely, but every single sound ninja was zooped out of the village. At incredible speed, yes, they were all taken away. Everyone was confused on what was going on as a phantom appeared. Orochimar did not understand until a phantom told Orochimar what he did. The Sonin started to feel pain. Powerful nanites were in Orochimar's system. These things were not going to be overwhelmed by his chakra. They were within his blood cell. They were within his entire structure. Over the month, Nut had been slipping it into his drink. Orochimar had no idea about this. Nuta was just too fast. Over the month, he has done a lot, completed a lot. He had spent a lot of time at the land of snow. Out of everyone, they had the largest, technologically advanced labs. And Naruto had all the material that he needed. And with the brain power that he now had, Naruto was able to make something to completely neutralize the Sonin without even throwing a fist. Soon after, he gathered all of them. Harrison, Jiraiya, all of those that participated in his torture. Well, not his per se. He also gathered Sakura and Sasuke and Kekashi as well. Even Danzo was brought out. Confusion marred all of their faces as Naruto took off the mask. When Sakura asked why he was doing this and what was going on, Naruto revealed to her that he killed her parents and simply laughed in her face as the fun was about to begin. So yeah guys, basically let's play Toffee Gas game. Switch across the place, check out for yourself. So see in this new episode. What did you just say? Sakura Haruno asked as she looked at Naruto after hearing what he just had to say about her appearance. He was standing there with a smile on his face looking directly into her eyes. He was smiling happily so as he looked towards the others that resided there rubbing his hands together. All of them were on guard, prepared for anything that he had to do, or anything that he was capable of. Well, let me be more clear when I speak. I killed your parents, Nuta said looking at her. But it's not just them that I killed. I was the one that was responsible for Tazuna's death, Uncle Midarashi, and several other citizens in this village. Even a young lady before I got these powers. That's... No, you're... Why are you saying this? Sakura said, trying hard to understand. How could he? He was her friend. He was one of her best friends. He was there for her during her tragic moments. He was there for her during her pain and suffering. Always there as a helping hand. Watching over her. Being there. A friend. A comrade. She trusted him. She collapsed down to her knees, having a hard time accepting what he was saying. Yes, it was me, Sakura. I was the one that blew up their house, effectively trapping them on the inside as I watched their bodies blow to pieces. It was truly amazing. And to have you by my side the entire time, you believing that I saw you as a comrade and a friend. It was rather hilarious. 
Sasuke whipped out a kunai as he pointed towards Naruto. What the hell is going on here, he said, confused about the whole thing. Why was Naruto saying that he did that? And why? Was they all gathered here? How did they even came to this point? Well, Sasuke, you see, I've been keeping a rather large secret. You should know by now, you should all know. Naruto paused. The noise. It's getting rather... Bothersome, isn't it? With that, he zipped off with red lightning. In seconds, Naruto slaughtered every single Sand Ninjas that had been left behind. He killed them all just like that. Temari Konkuro. He wiped them all out just like that. Gara was nowhere to be seen though. As Naruto zipped back to the area, Konoha Ninjas started to flock toward the scene. He looked towards Hiruzen, tell them to stay where they are. However, all Naruto got was anger pointed towards him. It seems like you don't understand the situation that you're in. Hiruzen's eyes went wide. No, don't! But it was too late as Naruto snapped. The neck of the four Kanoha ninjas that landed inside of the fighting arena. Hiruzen shouted out to them for them to stay where they are. All of them paused in confusion, seeing their comrades fall to the ground dead. Good. As long as they don't trespass in this area, I won't kill them. Yet. Everyone was at a standstill. Sasuke's eyes were wide as he saw what Naruto did. No one wanted to make a move knowing that it might result in countless Konoha ninjas even. Them dying as well. It turns out that Naruto was a lot faster than they all could have ever imagined. Making a move now would be rather stupid. Sakura was having a complete mental breakdown as she lay there on the ground. Hiruzen decided to speak up as he wanted answers. You died, he said. Ah, yes. In a sense, I did kill myself. Well, you see... I've gotten extremely faster over the past couple of months. So fast that I was able to run back and got someone. A copy of myself. It's called a time remnant. From a reality that no longer exists. Therefore, not consequential to effect me in any way. However, he himself had no idea about his reality no longer existing. And I figured that it would take too much time for me to convince him so. I erased his memories. Not only that, I stripped him of every ounce of his speed, erasing everything that he knew up to that point. So you were torturing a completely innocent person. Well, by mental standards, Naruto said with a smile on his face. So you killed yourself for what? A joke. The torturous. Hiruzen said. Well, it was fun for me. Why? Why do all of this, Hiruzen asks. Well, if you haven't noticed yet, I'm a psychopath. I've learned that from a long time ago. Isn't that right, Inuichi? Inuichi gaze froze as he looked towards Naruto. I remember those sessions that we had when I was younger. But I caught on rather quickly though, realizing that I needed to play a better part in order for you not to treat me as a threat to myself and my surrounding area. And you came in once again, and they also brought you, Kuruna UI, also a mind specialist as well. Oh, I'm sorry. I never got to apologize. I killed your friend Uncle Midoroshi. Her death was a true tragedy. It pained me to end your life, but I had to do it to gain Orochimaru's trust. Kurunai clenched her fist but she held herself back as best as she could. You say that like, we're supposed to believe the words that are coming out of your mouth, Inuichi said. I bet you didn't feel a single thing when you ended her life. Ah, you know me rather well. So what now? Know that the games are up. Now that we know who you are, what now Hiruzen said, preparing himself to fight. You know, I found out about myself 
I tend to get bored really quickly. Therefore, there always has to be something that is there to entertain me, something to bring me joy. And right now, Naruto looked down towards Sakura that was a mess on the ground. She's boring me. Before they could do anything, Naruto zipped towards her. He grabbed Sasuke in the process as well. Kakashi blazing through hand sign. Everyone quickly jumping into the fray. However, Naruto spun violently. As violent, lightning bolts started to discharge out of his spinning tornado. Blowing them all away. Thrusting his hand out when he stopped. The effects of the tornado brushed out. Throwing them all back. Sasuke was unconscious as Naruto held Sakura by the neck in the ear. My little game that I was playing with you got bored really quickly. However, it was fun expressing and feeling those emotions that you went through. I have to say it's been a delight. Naruto shoved his hand clean through her chest without even blinking. As he tossed her away like garbage. He then picked the Uchiha up as Kakashi was already on his feet. Harrison moving towards him, Jiraiya moving through hand signs. Behind them was the rest of the members of the Inushika Cho. There was also Shikaku as he went through hand sign, trying to use his shadow to grab Naruto, but Naruto sped off with Sasuke. As he started to zoop around the arena, Harrison shouting out orders as fast as he could for them to move. However, as Naruto whipped past someone, either their throat or their heart would be punctured, ripped through. He was massacring the crowd, the civilians that weren't able to evacuate. Having no reaction time, Naruto slaughtered at least a hundred of them in a couple of seconds. Donzo Shimura was trying to flee the scene when suddenly Naruto arrived as he surrounded Donzo. There was five Naruto's. However, it was just his speed. The images around Danzo. The man was stuck in the center. Unfortunately, I can't allow you to leave. There's something I need from you. Danzo reached up as quickly as he could. As he was about to tear the bandage off his face. To reveal the Sharingan on their knees. Knowing that this wasn't a threat that he could fight so easily. However, when Danzo finally reached up to his eye. All he felt was blood and pain. He pulled his hand back to see Naruto had ripped the eye out of his socket. But not just that, his entire arm was gone. His special modified arm was severed from his shoulder. You're fast, but I'm faster, said Naruto whispering in his ear. Naruto zooped around on so all that could be seen was the red lightning. Everyone rushing towards the scene but it was too late. When Naruto finally disengaged, Donzo crumbled in a bloody mess. There was no life left within him. Naruto saw all of them rushing towards him. I'll see you all soon, he said. And I'll make it quite the spectacle. He threw Sasuke over his shoulder as he zooped off at blinding speed, leaving the village entirely. Once Naruto was a distance away, he dropped Sasuke to the ground as he blurred through hand sign. Summoning Jutsu. The entire clearing was filled with white smoke. Poof of smoke going off in a long direction. When the smoke finally cleared, there were 50 things that were summoned. Their bodies were made from a special steel. They had Fuinjutsu marking all over them. They had artificial skin. That made them look like humanoid beings, but you could see it in their eyes. They had no soul, they had no true existence beyond their leader's command. They weren't real people, they had bald heads. All of them were dressed in a similar clothing compared to Naruto's, but it wasn't as flashy. And each of their clothing had a number on it, one going up to 50. Each of them were created by him personally. It was a section of Fuinjutsu that was only fitted for the highest learners and Naruto had learned everything that he needed to. It was called animation. Breathing life 
into lifeless objects. All of them were created by Nuta personally. The sealing marks that were all over their body were the Fuinjutsu marker running through them. It was a perfect adapting seal, all of them charged by Naruto. Not just with his chakra, however, his speed force. Yes, he has learned how to harness the energy to a point that he was able to produce it connected to his chakra. While it did not merge completely with the source of energy, it was connected to it. Therefore, he theoretically thought he could expand it into something else. While doing this on a normal human being might burn their insides out, these were not human beings and they were able to withstand the vast amount of electrical flow coursing through them as he had to make them extremely durable. They only had one command, do whatever the hell he say. Well, his chakra basically. Because they were going off of his chakra, his words, everything, emotion of him. His body was infused with the thing after all. Take him back, Naruto said, pointing towards Sasuke. The rest of you, retrieve them all. They zooped off as they took Sasuke while they weren't as fast as Naruto. They were fast enough to get the job done. All the sound ninjas that Naruto had taken from the stadium, he had knocked them out. That is why he couldn't spend a lot of time within Kanoha. One by one, the sound ninjas were taken, even the sound four. As they were taken somewhere far away. Granted, Naruto need to recharge his machines that he created. The seal that was on their chest was like their heart. Running out of chakra mean they would depower and they would stop move entirely. However, Naruto had been up to this for a very long time now. After all, months to him was like years. He's been doing a lot during this time. Faking his death and all of that. And he's accomplished a lot. Reaching a far way. With some help. Well, those people are forced to give him help. It turns out that Orochimaru had awoken. From where Naruto had placed him. And the Sony had broke free. And proceeded to run away. Yes, he had fled. Naruto lost the Sony. Despite his earlier statement about... Having him bested, yes, Naruto lost him. Time skip. Arriving towards an unknown location, the place was a wide, extremely large space. As Naruto arrived there, there was a massive spear, an orb. Naruto walked over towards a rather complex set of computers. His fingers moved at blinding speed as there was a loud sound. He grabbed onto the lever and pull. The machine started to lit up. Naruto produced Donzo's eye and arm as well. He proceeded to place them inside the machine. Naruto slowly watched as there was a wave of electricity that ripped the arm and eye to sunders, turning the physical matter in to what seemed to be gas, a blue gas substance. Well. On closer inspection, you could see that it was chakra. But not just any chakra though. Yes, he had big plans. Very, very big plans. Naruto heard movement as he turned to see. The sound ninjas being brought towards him. His machines going to retrieve the others. Grabbing the sound ninjas, Naruto threw them inside the spear. Their bodies were hit, causing them to scream out. Pain awakening them, but... Their bodies were then torn to sunders, turning into chakra once again. As Naruto repeat the process over and over, stopping to have a little meal. Well, little was an understatement. Given his fast metabolism and how much he moved, he had to eat over 50,000 calories. So yes, little was an understatement. As he started to up the quantity, placing all the ninjas in by the dozens. As he watched their body be torn to sunders, and all that was left was chakra. Little by little, Naruto watched with a smile on his face until there was just one left the unconscious Uchiha. Sasuke was waking up as he was finally coming to. 
He opened his eyes as he looked around. Where, where am I? He said. As Nuta zooped in front of him with his mask, scaring the living daylight out of him, Nuta grabbed him and started to pull him on the ground. Sasuke's body was not moving. He could not move a single finger. What are you doing? He said, struggling to talk. Nuta pulled him until he reached a machine as he threw him. Sasuke landed roughly. As he was lying on his side, unable to pull himself up, what is this? You monster! What the hell are you doing? Shh! My time to talk. How do you feel knowing that? You will never achieve your goal. How do you feel knowing that? You will never get revenge on Itachi. That all of your training, all of your hard work was for nothing. That you pushed yourself, you tore yourself apart. Only to now face a miserable end. Knowing that, Itachi would live on and you would just die, cease to exist, a failure of your clan. You were always insecure about that, that you could never achieve your goal and look at you now, a pitiful mess with no one and nothing. You have no parents, no family left, except for the monster that slaughtered them all. In a sense, we're just alike, but unlike you. I'm not a whiny little bitch. Nuta said with a smile. Don't do this, Sasuke said. Tears of frustration gathering in his eyes. I have to kill him. I have to get my revenge. Nuta zipped towards the machine. Perhaps this is wrong. Perhaps. I should allow you to... Nah. Nuta activate the machine as Sasuke scream. The electricity tearing into him. Showing that this was no normal form of electricity. As Sasuke Sharingan activated, his eye sockets were the first thing to burn away. Nuta watch as a chakra just like when he put in Danzo arm and eye. When it went to the other tube it was red, not blue. A smile graced Nuta features. Time for a step two, he said. Time skip. Kanoha was on high alert. Extremely high alert. As there was a lot of movements being made in the village. People were moving around orders were being given. A lot was going on. When Harrison got word from an unknown source. The letter was properly scanned to make sure there wasn't anything that would be used to set trap or anything against him. When the letter was finally open, Harrison was rather surprised. Time skip. Harrison made his way. It wasn't too far after. The Anvus checked the area. They came to him instead of him going to them. This could be a trap, however. They were desperate and they saw only one person. Once the Anvu got that information, they alerted him. Arriving, Harrison saw the person. It was a person from the land of snow. I got the message from your leader, Harrison said. The information was written that you were being controlled. The entire country was under the phantom's control. Yes. The snow ninja nodded towards the man. It has been a truly horrific experience. So many people have died. However, because of our seclusion away from the world, many does not know about what is going on. I am one of the few trusted that Lord Dodo has put in command of the weapon that he's creating. A weapon, Harrison said. He told me that he might have the answer to all my problems. Yes. We believe that we found the weapon that can be used to stop this speedster. With the speed that he possessed, there is simply no way that we can best him hand to hand. He can slaughter an entire nation by himself in a couple of minutes. And that is simply something that we can't go up against. However, we don't possess the force or the manpower to use this. If we try, the last time we tried to make a move against him, he slaughtered a quarter of our ninjas. So we're willing to hand the weapon over to you. As long as you use it to put him down, there will be no capturing, no bargaining, just death. 
Harrison looked at the man in front of him. Without an ounce of hesitation, he accepted. Snavi had been brought back to the village. This wasn't a joke, this wasn't a matter that can be left out. Jariah was the one that was sent. Jariah was sent with a letter from Harrison. This wasn't a axing. This was a demand. So she had to come back. As everyone was on high alert, ninjas manned the wall, ninjas manned the forest. As Harrison was heading back towards his location, the Anvus constantly checking around him. Harrison saw something on the ground. It came from underneath. A snake. The old man's eyes narrowed dangerously at the creature that approached him and it released something from its mouth. It was a small note. He reached down and picked it up. Harrison's eyes widened as he read said note. Moments later, Harrison made his way back to the village. As he made his way towards the forest of death, in the forest of death, there was an underground location as he told the Anvus to remain outside. It was one of Orochimaru former bases that had been scoured and, well, every dangerous substance had been removed. Harrison arrived to find none other than the Sawning waiting for him patiently. Orochimaru, he said. Orochimaru stepped forward like a looming threat only for him to stop and start to cough violently. He tried to cover his mouth but Harrison saw the blood particles flying all over. The Sawning wiped his hand on his own clothing. Orochimaru didn't look good at all. His hair was all disheveled. He looked exhausted, weak, like he was in a state of agonizing pain. As he fell, Harrison moved forward and caught him so that he wouldn't collapse face first on the ground. Harrison rests him down in a chair nearby. What is this? I saw Naruto took you. What are you doing here? He said. Desperate times. Call for desperate measures, the Sanin said. What exactly is that supposed to mean? Harrison's eyes narrowed dangerously. If I'm not mistaken, you are planning to attack Kanoha and kill me. Yes, I was. And I'm not going to stand here and act like I wasn't because it won't do me any good to act that out. However, we have a bigger problem here. Unlike most of you, I have an idea on what the desires of this young boy is. And if we don't work together, we're all dead. Why should I even think of accepting your help? I can see from the state that you're in your weak. Not to mention you're afraid. Yes. I suppose I can admit that to my sensei. I'm afraid. Every single one of my sound ninjas. All of my allies have been killed. Thousands of people wiped away. Just like that. I had my snakes check. And the bases are empty. And I'm not in the best condition. I can't put up a fight if you wish to end my life right now. But what I do possess is the intellect on how exactly his speed works. And you will need my help to stop him. Because if we don't put an end to him, we're both going to die. And Harrison said, and what? What else do you want? I can tell that that is not all. Make snazzy. Help me. My body is failing. The more chakra I use to withstand the deterioration in my cells, the more weaker I get. And if I'm not given medical expertise soon, not even my body swapping technique will be able to save me. I'll cease to exist. And without my help, your chances of survival are extremely low. The mere fact that Orochimaru came here himself. The main fact that he came here to side with them. Kanoha of all places show the threat that Naruto actually was. It show how truly dangerous Naruto was. As a son in despised the hidden leaf and yet here he was. Time skip. 
Have you gone insane? Snelly shouted at Harrison as the both of them, along with Jariah, was currently within. Oruchimar hid in hideout. The farmer that was residing within the forest of death. Look, we can lock him up afterwards. I just need you to find a way to slow the process down. Save his life after what he intended to do. You know what he would have done to you in the village and yet you want me to stop this process and save his life. Not for his safety, but for the people of Kanoha, for the people of this world. You don't understand, Hiruzen said looking at her. It was my responsibility. It was me, I was there. And I was unable to see how truly extensive these problems was in the boy. And now the whole world is at risk. I've already sent word to the other Kagis because sooner or later they're all going to experience what is to come. And Orochimaru has a good idea on what exactly Naruto is capable of. Frankly because he worked with him. Another reason why we shouldn't help him, they work together. Yes, they did. However, Naruto betrayed him and killed all of his comrades. You can see why he might be out for vengeance. And you know that there is not much in this world that scares him. So think, why would he of all people be scared of a child? Just imagine what Naruto has planned. If he's not alive to help us, to at least give us information with what I'm planning on doing, there's a good chance that all of us will die. Snavy gritted her teeth angrily as she looked toward the sawing on the metal table. Jiraiya was leaned up against the wall, quiet, not making a sound. Just thinking, Orochimaru was not in the mood to talk either, in a constant state of pain. Snavy released her breath as she walked over towards him. She gave him the most hateful look that she could muster, but she tried to see what she can do. Time skip. The right Kage and the Tissue Kage refuse to accept anything from Hiruzen. And just like that, problems start to arise. First, it was Kiri, Yagra, the leader, the one that has been terrorizing the rebellion group, was taken. And a lot of people died during that kidnapping. After that, it was Taki. And after that, it was the Six Tails in the wilderness. The only one that knew that he was taken was the family of a girl known as Holuru. Because she was violently killed in a rather ruthless way. And her body was discovered and Yagra was not there. And they knew about the student master relationship that they possess. After that, an entire platoon of stone shinobis were wiped off the face of the map and the five and six tail host was gone. Oniki was rather worried now, not taking the advice of the Hokage as he had chosen to shut everything down believing that it was just a trick despite, well there being some common ground there. The Raikage, the most stubborn one out of them all, was now regretting his actions. He felt his brother Chakra spiral. He also felt the Chakra of the two-tailed hosts, and then they all vanished away. Just like that, arriving to Rankyo Valley where his brother resided, the house was destroyed, and a good side of the mountain was vaporized, like it was hit by a high voltage of electricity. Chaos was springing up around all the elemental nation. Countless people were being taken. The Nexico village containing all female warriors was wiped out. There was no dead body, there was no blood, they were just gone. Jiraiya. Jiraiya and Hiruzen knew everything. As for those that were a part of the main group, words started to be sent to Kanoha from the Raikage begrudgingly. And word started to be sent from the Tishikage as well, as villages that were nearby. Villages that contained nothing but civilians were now a ghost town. All of this happening within a day. None of this was making sense. 
One person could not do all of this. Here is a curse. As, as fast as Naruto was, how was he doing all of this by himself? It made no sense at all. However, the real tragedy came when a much larger village with ninjas was attacked. The ignorant village. It came out of nowhere. Conan was giving Nagato the recent information from Saucer Spy Network about the tail beasts. When suddenly Nagato turned his gaze away. What's wrong? Nagato was confused as his eyes were moving so fast. Something was definitely wrong. They came out of nowhere. He could sense all of their chakra. Immediately all the pods opened as all. Six paths of pain emerged. Conan heard the explosions. As she took to the village sky. Creating three clones of herself. As she saw them. Strange men with bald head. Their eyes seemed so lifeless and soulless. They were moving at inhuman speed, attacking people for no reason, causing explosions, releasing red lightning from their body. She descended down along with her clones to put an end to it. While Nagato Pats went for the real person, he could feel the chakra stimulation after all. And all of them was linked to this one person. The paths descended down in a rather empty area where there was a lot of giant pipes. Arriving on the scene, Phantom stood there with a smile on his face. Nagato gaze narrowed through the eyes of his paths as Tendo spoke. I, I've seen you before. Tendo went back in his mind. Well, Nagato's mind to rehash a memory from the past. It was when he was younger. Rain was pouring within the village as usual. As he stood on the tower, his best friend was still alive. However, across the building nearby, someone was standing there, just looking at him. It seems like some kind of demon. As there was red lightning coming from him. Nagato blinked and the person was gone. Back to the original time. Who are you? said Tendo. The person laughed. Who am I is not important. But you know. Answers is the most important thing sometimes. And when you don't get answers. It's rather stressful isn't it? I should know. And your frustration to not getting these answers. Well, I'm not going to tell you. Naruto thrust forward as Nagato held his hand out. Almighty push. Naruto ran as time slowed itself down. He closed his eyes and waited for the gravitational wave to reach him. The moment it touched his finger, Naruto's eyes started to glow with lightning. It was a gravitational force, something that he could mimic after all, and he had 5 seconds. Nuta allowed his body to fuse exactly with the force that was released, allowing him to pass right through it. Tendo could not stop him as Nuta ran directly through Tendo, fading through him. Looking into his palm, Nuta was holding several rods. He launched all of them at inhuman speed. Each of them hit a path of pain. Conan descended upon the area as her clones had took to the village, trying to stop these monsters, but she could not do it alone. She needed help, and the village ninjas were being slaughtered. She was about to say something when suddenly, the human path grabbed her. Conan did not expect this in the slightest. When the revival path, arms start to vibrate similar to Naruto's. Her eyes widened as he punched through her skull, effectively ending her life. They dropped her body like she was garbage, as all the paths drop. The rods had a vibrational frequency connected to Nagato's chakra, so when Naruto took the rod out of the leader pain. 
he infused it with his own. The lightning coursing through him and his own chakra as he matched and overpowered the vibrational frequency because the rods were conductors. So when he hit each of the path with one of them, well, it took them over and gave him control instead. Ruta zooped off at blinding speed. He arrived and ripped the front cover off, Nagato machine off, using it to pin his arms down, stopping him from completely pulling them out of the machine. All of that happened just in a few seconds after all. Nagato looked at Naruto with a startling fear in his eyes as Naruto's hand was resting at his throat, vibrating rather fast. You're probably wondering who I am. How do I know these things about you? How did I know about your rods? The connection between your path? How did I know how long it will take you to free yourself? Well, the answer would bring you relief. But I enjoy knowing that. You die in pain, not knowing. Nagato eyes widen as Naruto plunges his hand through his throat, severing his connection with his brain. His body completely went limp. Naruto proceeded to remove his eyes carefully as he placed them inside of a jar with a liquid to keep them sustained. With that, Naruto went through hand sign. He slammed his hand on his stomach where the Deck Reaper seal was. The seal started to glow as a large portion of the fox power, diluted with another seal, started to spread through each and every one of his creations. The numbers on their chest started to glow. Their eyes started to spark with more lightning, more power fusing through them as they quickly increased their pace. They were much faster. It's collection time, said Naruto. Time skip. A violent scream could be heard. Kisame, known as a tailless tail beast, was currently being electrocuted in a prison of his own making. A massive water bubble. Red lightning was ripping through it. The bubble popped as Kisame collapsed hard. His body fry. Unfusing with his sword Samehata. But he wasn't dead though, just unmovable for the time being. As for his partner, Itachi Uchiha, he was a distance away on his knees coughing up blood. They were the last two remaining. One by one, Ruta hunted the Akaski down. Surprisingly, though, he did not kill a single one of them, he took them instead. Death was not in the future for them. Itachi on the other hand show why he was one of the most dangerous as he created a monstrosity. It was large and the shield was said to be unbreakable, a mirror that can reflect everything. Itachi wouldn't allow this to stand. This boy was the one that ended his brother's life. When the news had reached them, it was a shocker. His first instinct was to leave the organization and hunt Naruto down. But just two days and three hours later, Naruto came to him. Itachi pushed himself to the max, even when he was crying blood and coughing it up. He was determined to stop Naruto. The thing swung its arm down as Naruto ran and jumped on top of it. He zooped up the side as he started to run around it at blinding speed. Itachi pulled out the Tatsuka blade, intending on sealing Naruto away. He plunged it downwards, however, as it slammed into Naruto. Itachi believed that he's won, only for Naruto to run right through it, having already phased his molecules. The problem was, the chakra was being a problem in Naruto's way. Usually, he could simply phase through things. However, chakra was a constant power that was constantly flowing, constantly moving, so it was much harder. An idea came to his mind as Naruto ran away. He ran. He ran away. He was completely gone, Itachi having no idea where he was. However, as Naruto zooped across the world, buildings were exploding. 
The ground was ripping apart. He was causing violent collision. He didn't just run away, Nuta ran around the entire world. Circling the goddamn globe. When he returned, Nuta charged every ounce of his run into his fists. Right behind Itachi. He wasn't fast enough to turn when Nuta made contact. All of that force was released. The power was just too much. It threatened to open up a tearing rift. Breaking a space in time but Nuta can't slow up majority of the force. Having no idea that the punch would be that strong. Because while this punch was infused with. The speed force energy was also infused with his chakra. And the fox chakra coursing through him as well. Those three energies colliding into one. Not to mention with the balance of chakra that Itachi used to create. Isusa no was a problem. The problem was as well. Itachi body did not survive. It was vaporized during the collision. Nuta was upset by this. However, he had things to do. As he took Kisame. He ripped Samihata apart with his bare hands. As he took Kisame and made his way off. Returning back to what he was doing. Time skip. It was a day later. As Naruto was casually walking, he was dressed in his phantom clothing. He was calmly making his way. He was nearby the wasteland that was once the land of rain when suddenly a distortion in the air appeared on a nearby broken building. You know, I was wondering how long it would take you to show yourself. A man wearing an orange mask showed up on the scene. Surprise, that he was, Obito Uchiha, now that shook him to his core, Phantom said turning to look at him, Obito couldn't understand how he knew, who he was, who are you Obito said, Nuta stepped towards him, well, if you want to know that, guess you're gonna have to torture the information out of me, because I'm not saying, Fine, Obita said. I'll take it by force. Well, you will also get the location of the Renegon. I know how much you want those. So you're responsible for all of this. And why weren't you here when I first arrived? Busy, said Naruto. Fine then, Obita said. With that, he sucked himself away in a swirling vortex. As he appeared behind Naruto. With the intent to grab him, and that he did, he grabbed the back of Naruto's shirt, trying to pull him in. And now you're vulnerable, Naruto said. As everything slowed down, his adamantine claws extended from his fingertips from the suit. Naruto spun and split his throat clean open. He pulled him out and slammed him into the ground, tearing his mask off in the process. Obita's eyes went wide as he gripped onto his throat, trying to stop the bleeding only for Naruto to plunge, his hand into both of his sides and lift him off the ground. A devilish smile on his face. I would say that was revenge for killing my parents but, to be quite truthful, I don't care about that one bit. Naruto heard something beeping as he looked down. Damn it. He took off with Obito as he was gone. A moment later, a creature arrived. Having a lower half that looked like a ghost, its arms skinny. The creature was known as a time wraith and it was chasing Naruto. But Naruto was already gone, so it had to keep up. As Naruto was constantly moving, there was a reason for that. However, it could sense his speed force when it was close by. And there were traces of it. So it was still lagging behind but it was constantly on Naruto's path. And there was a good reason for that. Time skip. A meeting was called between all the Kagis. For them to gather to discuss the looming threat that they had to combine and face. However, before that meeting could even start. Nuta arrived at Kanoha Gates. 
zooping past all of the watch, all of the guards. He arrived at the gates, shocking the living daylight out of everyone. Immediately, they started to move, calling protocol and procedures to try and stop him. Alert was sent to the Hokage as people started quickly move in. Naruto was calmly walking though, paying them no mind. Hands calmly at his side as he looked around, everyone pulling their weapons and moving around. He looked down towards the watch that he was wearing. Two minutes and five seconds, he said, as he kept on moving. Naruto made his way directly towards the tower. None of them even trying to attack him. That was strange. Upon arriving, Naruto saw Hiroson. Snedi was there, Jiraiya was there. They were the only ones, aside from the other ninjas that surrounded him. Naruto saw Kakashi in the crowd, my guy, Kurenai. This was going to be problematic if he chose to fight them here. However, there was no citizens here. Absolutely none, no civilian. So you got them out. Smart move. Now the whole world is against me. Is it too late for me to give up and turn myself in, Naruto asked. Hiruzen scowled when he heard that. As he glanced towards Jiraiya slightly, Naruto turned his back towards them. People of Konoha, he said. Well, I suppose it's now ninjas of Konoha. I'm not here to kill you all, but I do need your assistance though. There is something that I... Naruto looked down. The next moment he was electrocuted. As a powerful seal pulled him down and shock the living daylight out of him. They just needed to restrain him for a second. Now shouted Hiruzen as Orochimaru on top of the tower was standing behind the machine. He pressed down on it as the machine released a strange blue energy wave. It surrounded Naruto like a bubble. Naruto tears his hand across the ground. As the lightning came to a stop, Naruto started to laugh. What's this? Do you really think that this can contain me? How foolish of you. However, Hiruzen smirk. How cocky of you. We figure that you might show up sooner than later. And we figure that you were going to make a grand speech or something. After all, it is your MO. You always have to have all eyes on you. Naruto stepped forward as he touched the blue barrier. He tried to face through it, but it wasn't working. What? What the hell is this? He said. Courtesy of all the people that you've hurt in the land of snow and all the people that you've killed. I dropped the ball with you. And there's nothing I can do about that now. But I will not allow you to continue. Terrorized in this world, Jiraiya, he said. Jiraiya started to write a ceiling formula on the ground. What's this? So you're just gonna kill me right here? While I'm restrained, not even making it a fear fight. With you, there is no fear fight. You're just too fast, you're just too powerful. This was a necessary end for all that you've done. Here's in step towards the bubble. As the machine was continuously releasing that energy, Orochimaru was the one that was currently powering it. You side with Orochimaru and yet, you stand here like you're some kind of benevolent leader. Orochimaru saw that you were too much of a threat to be allowed to live. And he came over to Kanoha's side. I'm truly sorry that I wasn't able to stray you from this path and to give you a better future. I didn't just fail you, I failed your mother and father as well. Yes, you did. Because they trusted you. And they told you to watch over me and yet, you weren't there to watch over me. You were unable to see my psychopathic tendencies. Maybe if you did, things wouldn't have ended up this way. You're right, Hirazan said. But there's only one way to end this now. And it has to be done. Do your worst, said Naruto. That is when they heard a weird sound. What the hell is that? Everyone turned. 
as a time wraith was rushing towards Naruto. No, you have to get me out of here. That thing is going to rip me apart. It's a monster that's going to drain my very life essence. I'll abandon my goal. I'll, I'll, I'll stop do all of this. I'll work with you. I'll work with Kanoha and make the village stronger. I'll help you. Just let me out of here. I beg you, old man. Once you saw me like a grandson and I saw you like a grandfather. Please, don't do this to me. Give me another chance I can change. Please, Naruto, beg. Hiruzen looked at the thing coming for Naruto right away. I can't do that, he said. However, as Naruto started to cry, his cry turned into laughter. I know you wouldn't. I just want to see the look on your face when I do this. The moment the time wraith enter, the dome of energy, Naruto pressed down on the watch that he had. Orochimaru was confused when the machine suddenly changed. As the color changed from blue to black, it was now a black dome. Naruto stepped right out of it as the time wraith was caught. Finally, Naruto said completely free as he tapped Hiruzen on the shoulder. A perfect confinement for it, don't you think? Don't bother trying to move. Any of you. Look how close I am to your leader. I can snap his neck before you even blink. You know, I really enjoy the look on your face right now. I mean, what's going through your mind? How is he free? How is he not contained? So much specialist, so much people believing in this little machine that would contain my speed. Ah, and yet, here I stand, completely free. Would you look at that? At the first sense of danger, he ran away. Orochimaru had jumped off the building and took off. Screw this, he said, realizing that they fail. The machine that was supposed to be all of their salvation. Fail. Yes, it fail. You see this thing. It's called a time wraith. It hunt people that mess with time. Oh yes. I've become fast enough that I can even run through time itself. When I first saw this thing chasing after me, I was quite worried. Knowing that if it caught me, I would be screwed. And it was hard to contain it. Well, there was a reason I went in the past. You see that little machine over there? I made some tweak to it. You want to know how? Well, you see I possess this rather special ability. I stand still. And I mean I really stand still. When I do so, I simply vibrate. So fast that I become invisible to the naked eye. I saw what Dodo was doing, I saw everything that you were doing. From day one I knew every conversation. Who do you think allowed Orochimaru to escape? I mean think of it. I had him. In my hands. I allowed him to escape. Because I wanted him to think that he's free. Even right now I know exactly where he is. Those nanites that your lovely female Sanin was able to take out of his bloodstream. There is others, allowing me to track him and his every movement. So from day one I knew everything. I just enjoy allowing you to think that. You had it all under control. And from day one that machine was under my control. I simply tweet the frequency. Running from this thing for so long I was able to find out. The vibration that it's moving on. And now it's all mine. Captured. You have no idea how much this is going to help me, and help my cause. Now, let's begin the collection, shall we? Over a thousands of the bots arrive. Naruto was not powering them with his own chakra anymore. It was the power of the tail beasts. All of the tail beasts. Under his control, 1,000 of them arrive. Naruto knocked Hiruzen out instead of killing him. As the two Sanin attack him. Time skip. 
When Harrison finally woke up, he found himself confused on where he was. He could not feel a single part of himself as he had no idea where he was or what was going on. Ah, finally you're awake, said Naruto, showing himself to the man. Where am I, Harrison said. My home, away from home, you might say. While you are sleeping, I accomplish a lot. I brought the wraith here, and I placed him in my little machine. Harrison saw a massive orb, as he had no idea what it was for, but connected to that orb was a chamber, a human chamber. You see this? I took almost, hmm, 70% of the earth population and placed them inside. All of that chakra. But it's not only that. That rate that I captured, it has a rather special, unique energy. So I put it inside there as well, absorbing its essence. You see, what I want to accomplish is something far greater than you can even imagine. The negative speed force that grant me my power. I was in the domain and I can feel the amount of power coursing through it. You see, I don't want to gain stronger by physical or speedy ways. Strength is not my desire. Omniscient is. Because why settle for just gaining a boost of strength when you can gain? The powers of a god. W what are you talking about, Hurzen said? I'm going to attempt to do something rather risky. With all the power I've gathered so far and with that wraith as well, I'm going to infuse it all into myself while clashing it against the speed force energy at the same time. By my calculations and by this machine that I've created, the speed force energy should be all brought forward in an attempt to stop this new source of energy from polluting its location. Because it will try to get rid of this access and inferior energy that has nothing to do with it. And when that does happen, it's going to open a rift inside of the chamber. And... The only conduit that will be in there to absorb that riff energy is my body. And the machine's special qualities will force it all inside of me. At the same time forcing my cells to adapt. But my cells aren't strong enough to do that. So they will break apart, dematerialize and fuse together with the natural speed that comes from the energy as well. The both of them becoming one essentially turning me into the speed force energy itself turning me into a god that is all-knowing and everywhere my essence will be able to spread across this entire universe because unlike the natural speed force energy that is kept in its own little dimension i would not be bound by those idiotic rules or regulations i will be boundless and break free from the captivation. You say this like, there isn't a high possibility that you would die, Harrison said. Oh yes, 80% chance I might die. But you know me, I live for the next thrill. And this is the greatest thrill I can ever receive. So if I die, I die. I've already broken this world and left my mark on it. You should see what I've done to outside. So, who knows what's going to happen? Well, I'll see you on the other side. No, don't do it, Harrison said. What? Worried for me? Or are you concerned that I'll become a god and there will be nothing that will be able to stop me? It's not like you can stop me now. Ruta slammed the door shut and closed his eyes. With a smile on his face, he began the process. Harrison heard the violent, thundering winds. He saw the electricity. Suddenly he started to regain movement in his legs, his arms. 
He broke free as he saw all of Naruto robots. The next moment they all collapsed down though, the engine being pulled from them. Hiroshin ran, as fast as he could making his way outside. Arriving, he broke through a wooden door. As he ran down the stairs, he saw light as he made his way to see a waterfall. Pushing his head through getting soaked, he saw there was water coming down they were at the side of a cliff. Root had built this place inside of a mountain. Harrison saw the nuclear bomb behind him going off as he jumped. Boom! A lot of energy went through that gaping hole. The excess engine shoot upwards and blew the entire mountain to dust. Harrison crashed hard, falling, as he crashed through trees, collapsing and rolling on the ground. Harrison looked up as the mountain was gone. It took him some time, as he made his way back up there to check, and there was no sign of Naruto or nothing. He was gone. He died. Harrison breathed a sigh of relief as he was glad to see that was the case. With his intention to become a god, he ended up destroying himself. He had to get back to Kanoha, having no idea where he was. He decided to go through Hansine, summoning Enma to find out what the hell was going on, on his location. Time skip. Upon arriving back to the Hidden Leaf Village, Around 80% of Kanoha shinobis had been massacred, with their chakra being absorbed. That was what led to their death, and Naruto found the civilians, purposely found them. He wrote in blood on the wall of the cave that they were safely stored in. He drew a smiley face and wrote, found them, just to taunt Hirzen. How would he know that he would escape? Or perhaps he just wrote this for anyone. Over the next couple of weeks, people had to gather from all over. The world population had been severely reduced. Naruto was lowballing it. He had wiped out over 90% of people, absorbing them into his machine. Hiroshin was surprised though. He would have expected a larger explosion than that when he came to Naruto's failure but he had no idea about anything like that. The land of snow was no longer there. Naruto killed every single one of them. Jiraiya was dead, Snevi was dead, Kakashi was dead. The elemental nation was at an all time low right now. Foes alike were no longer foes. As so much has lost so many. As they were on the brink of, well, extermination. If they didn't decide to group up and repopulate the earth because of one boy and his stupid goal. <sighs> A meeting was being had. Surprisingly, every single leader was alive. Meitarumi. The Raikage, the Tishukage, and, well, the sand didn't have any representation because Naruto had killed Baki. He killed Gara, and he also killed the sand siblings. However, someone was standing in for them, a woman known as Lady Chiyo. Yes, they were coming together to have a meeting about how they were going to properly run the world. All those that paid them for missions were now gone. So things were looking bleak. In order to survive, they all had to work together. They decided to meet at a neutral spot. While this didn't make much sense given that none of them would come to blows right now. However, hours before the meeting began, Hiruzen felt an off sensation. As he looked up into the sky, the Raikage stopped nearby, feeling the electricity as well. Everyone was confused on what was going on. Suddenly, a booming phenomenon happened. 
it was like the world itself was being sucked into a black hole. Everything was being pushed and pulled at the same time. Ripping out trees, crushing down mountains. It was catastrophic. Suddenly all that power fused and turned into one singular being. As Naruto appeared without his suit, Hi there, old man, he said. Harrison stepped back, startled and shocked. Ha, ha, how am I alive? That's your line, said Naruto. You see, it took a while. I myself thought I was dead. When I realized that, my mind was still intact. It worked. I supercharged all of my cells into the speed engine itself. And I was able to control it. It took me some time. To you, it was what, couple of weeks? However, to me, it has been over a couple thousand years. I had to learn how to contain all of the matter of the speed force, which is a physical endless reserve of energy. So you can understand why it took so long for me. But now I'm here. But the planet is being destroyed. You see, I now possess so much power that it's still hard to control it. So the excess energy, it's ripping your planet apart. Here is and look defeated. What? Have nothing to say. Man, I still enjoy seeing that look on your face. However, because of this merger, I gained this new understanding. This new intellect that I never had before. And now that I'm not bound by anything, I'm gonna go global. I'm not just gonna take this universe. I'm gonna take this multiverse. And then I'm gonna go for the outer verse. I'm gonna find a way to rule it all. To control it all. I'll become one with everything and everyone. Did you know there's other speed force out there? Other source of energies that grant wielders immaculate abilities. When I became one with the speed force I saw, these new speedsters, one of them known as the Flash, in a different multiverse entirely, another one known as the Reverse Flash, Zoom, Thon, so many more. There was so much of them. I saw them all. And I intend to gain access to all of their power. I intend to gain access to all known power in the known universe. That's gonna be fun. Now doesn't it sound fun, said Naruto. Harrison was left broken and speechless. The Raikage seen Naruto try to attack him. Naruto looked towards him. Really? Naruto merely snapped his finger. The Raikage exploded into lightning. As he stepped in front of Hiruzen, Watch your planet burn, he said. As Naruto said that he allowed the power inside of him to spiral outwards. He kept Hiruzen alive for a few seconds. For him to see the trees turn into dust and the earth turn into mush. As the whole planet explode. As he pushed the man out. From the protective spear that he kept him in. Allowing him to see the final moments. His last thoughts was how he failed everything and everyone. Once again, Naruto became a living black hole of energy. Time to expand. As he went off in the known universe. To become one with everything. But guys, it'd be end up so right here. If you want to see the next part and do. I'm just kidding guys. This is the end. It's been an amazing ride. I just want to thank you all for accompanying me on this ride. But you already know new what is coming now soon. So yeah, I hope you guys enjoy each and every one of them. But I'm off for now. See you guys soon. Peace.